Welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to create a benchtop shave horse. And if you've never seen a shave horse in action before, it's meant for working on spindle work and things that you want to round. You use a spoke shave and you need a horizontal surface to be able to work on these. Easy to clamp and unclamp. Now a traditional shave horse will require a footprint in your shop that's quite large where you sit on a bench and work on it that way. I have a small shop and don't have room for that, so I'm going to show you how to make a benchtop version. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. If you haven't checked out our video series yet on this tool cabinet, the last video was putting up the spoke shaves in my drawing. We've also got a video coming ahead about how to reproduce some spindle work like this using the shave horse. This is from a broken Windsor chair. Now for this project, the Benchtop Shave Horse, I'm actually going to put out plans and if you'd like to purchase those plans, that'll help the funding of our channel and help us produce more videos. So let's get to it. We'll start with material selection. I'm using scraps from my workshop here. This is some maple. This is inch and three quarters. Uh, this is a good strong base for the Shave Horse. I've got some ash here that I'm going to rip down for the sides, uh, some dowel, and some pine. And I'm using a piece of softwood here to clamp down on the top. Um, I want something that's going to give a little bit and give me a better hold than if I were to use two really hard pieces of maple. I'll get the base set over here, uh, get it extended out here where I want, and then clamp this down. And I'll rip this down and get some parts ready for the sides. Cut these sides on an angle at the top, and the reason for that is that when I push down on the treadle, I want the head to come down on an angle here that's pushing down on this board. So the next step here is for me to cut this in and get the joinery fit so I've got a really strong head here that isn't going to move. I'm just marking out the joinery here. First thing I do is get a square line. And then as I lay this on here, you can see I need to mark the distance. So I'll mark that here. And now I have a point for another square line here and here. And then I can lay out my angles here. So just following that front line around the side. There. And there. Do the same thing to the other side. <coughs> going in three quarters of an inch to let in the boards there and there so I need to cut these out I put this in the place so I can cut out the pieces and you can see here I really do need to get my tools organized in my tool cabinet.
So I finished notching out the head here, and this is going to go at the top of the treadle. So I'll show you here. And then I've taken a scrap piece of maple that I have here, and just on the table saw and the miter saw, cut out the pedal. So that's going to be secured here. And then this goes on top. With a nice tight fit there. So this treadle is all ready to go. The only thing I need to do is on the head here, I need to cut it back a little bit so that as I'm using the spoke shave, the point of this isn't getting in the way. So I'll trim that off and then get this put together. I'll start by gluing up the joints. And as I show on a lot of my stuff, I use an artist brush to spread the glue. That way, get full coverage and maximize the strength of that glue joint. It's important to do both sides of the wood. There are actually aircraft technician rules that state when you're gluing wood together it needs to be glued on both sides. That just goes to show you the importance of putting glue on both sides for added strength. You don't want a glue starved joint. So that's step one, and then step two is to drill dowels to pin these together. With the holes drilled, now I take the back of my artist brush and I load it up with glue so I can get it to the bottom of the hole and spread the glue around. That way I get a nice even coat of glue. Do that on both sides here. Bring it all the way to the top. And then it's just a matter of adding glue to the dowel that's going in. And then tapping it home. Then take a flush cut saw and trim it off. The glue is now dried on these dowels, so I'm just going to take a chisel and slice off the surface and get them nice and level. Okay, and then I'll hit them with a the sander and we'll be all done. The treadle's all ready now with the foot pedal and the head, and it's nice and strong. So this is going on the maple base. And I've set up the distance here so that when this is plumb, uh, it's touching the work surface here and it's touching the floor. Now I need room to swing it. So what I'm going to do is raise it up three quarters of an inch while this is plumb, and then put a bolt in here and that will allow this to swivel and clamp down. So I'm going to put the first one three quarters of an inch height and then I'll probably drill another hole a little bit higher so I've got the ability to work on something that's larger as well.
drill the second hole here to allow me to work on thicker stock. The last thing I need to do is make sure that this doesn't wander back and forth. So I'm going to put a dowel in at the vise. Now I've got the full plans on this, giving you all the angles and dimensions for this benchtop shave horse. The link is in the description of the video. So let me put that dowel in, and I'll show you how it works. So you can see how this moves back and forth. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So I'm going to install a dowel right here. And to do that, I just need to mark a hole, and then drill it for that to fit. I drill until I can see light through the bottom, and then to prevent blowout, I'll drill it from the other side. If you've been watching this and think, Scott, why don't you just use your vise? I'll show you why. I could clamp this here, but it does tend to move around a little bit. I could put some blocking in there to prevent that. But when I need to change the position of this, I need to use two hands to do that. Unscrew the vise, reposition the piece, and then tighten it up again. With a shave horse like this, you don't need to do that. And I'll show you. So I'll get this clamped up here. So I put this piece in here, push on the pedal, and I've got it clamped down. Take my foot off, turn it, take my foot off and turn it. So I'm going to get out a couple tools and I'll show you how this works up close. I'm going to use this piece I turned on the lathe. I still have a square end on it. So it's just a matter of putting it in here and pushing on the pedal and that activates the treadle and locks down the head. So now I've got a really good strong grip on this that allows me to pull. So I start with my draw knife, just taking off little pieces and start rounding this off. Now with this still in my hand, I can reposition this to the next spot and just continue working. Now it's easy to change tools. I just moved to my spoke shave. This benchtop shave horse gives me all the functionality of a traditional shave horse, but it really saves a lot of space in the workshop. I'm now ready to be working on my next project, and that's to reproduce this broken spindle on this Windsor chair. This is part of our YouTube channel called Fixing Furniture. I'll leave a link in the description below. We teach you how to repair wooden furniture. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you can do so and click on the bell icon and that'll notify you every time we publish a video. If you learn something new here, please give it a thumbs up. That helps others find our videos. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop. <laughs>